This game is kind of quiet. This game is very quiet. I mean, I have literally removed uh, the sound reduction on desktop audio and it's still kinda... If I do this, will it be super loud for you? Yes, it is. That sound is even louder than the game. <laughs> It was time. The troops of the absolute evil oh. had driven the Alliance oh, back to their capital, King's Ending. Oh, the time so for the again. final battle had arrived. Prepare to destroy the Alliance, and with it, all good in the land once and for all. Uh, I loved it. Battle for King's Ending. Once upon a time, there was a kingdom full of flowers and rainbows. Where the sun shone all the time and there was loads of that goody goody lovey dovey good people stuff going on. There, the alliance of abominably good people lived in unearned wealth and prosperity. But there was a path leading to a different place there. At the end of this path was a rock. There was a cave carved in this rock in which the absolute evil lived. It wasn't a grubby, damp cave smelling of muck and mildew, but a deep, dark dungeon, so dark that even darkness itself was afraid of it. It was home to numerous innocent monsters who enjoyed a happy, contented <laughs> existence, living in complete harmony with their environment. But time and again, the sickening, sweet-smelling good visited this underworld in search of treasure and experience points. Many monsters found this to be the death of them, but much worse, the absolute evil's treasures were being stolen. One day, just as a few more heroes had finished plundering its dungeon, the absolute evil decided it had had enough and decided to do something new, something quite monstrous. Go to the surface. The Alliance tried to resist, but the approaching horde just flowed over them like an angry wave of axes, teeth, and bad breath. After numerous unrelenting battles, the absolute evil finally stood before the Alliance's capital, King's Ending. of the absolute evil reach the alliance capital. King's Ending. The lovable remnants of the forces of good had come here to make ready for the final battle. Evil would pay a high price indeed to storm those fortress walls. Or so they thought. <laughs> Suddenly, a rumble rose from deep within the earth. Stones burst asunder, revealing an ancient path into the depths. Out of the depths of Stygian darkness arises the invincible evil. With earth-shaking steps, the unstoppable evil began its trek towards the front. In the terribly improbable event that it may have forgotten how that works, a formidable help function had been Number of the beasts, huh? <clears throat> I 
I said. With earth-shaking steps, the unstoppable, if somewhat sluggish, evil began its trek towards the front. Ah, oh, there we have it. Even the forest could not withstand the aura of the ultimate evil and beat a hasty retreat. A few of the Alliance units had entrenched themselves here. A determined, absolute evil marched towards them in order to strike them down with its mighty weapon. Absolute evil had discovered a medal. These legendary awards ensured a creature could be made even more powerful. Only one once the creature could only wear one of its eyes ablaze with weed. The insidious evil gazed upon the blood-drenched battlefield. Here the last defenders of good would die, and an age of projectiles from the Alliance's catapults darkened the sky. But the horde's fighting skills were at their best in darkness if they survived. Nothing and no one could stop the invincible evil. destroyed the defenders camp in the west with the greatest of ease. Now, only one tiny camp offers any resistance to the absurdly evil... And even that won't be able to hold out for much longer. Nice. Leap damage is always nice to have. Defenders camp in the east with the greatest of ease. The defenders in front of the city had been beaten to a pulp and defeated. Now the time had come to attack King's Ending, the final battle reckoned. The city gate was firmly barricaded by the Alliance's archers, but the absolute evil would not allow itself to be held out by such a ridiculous impediment. So, go get them! Destroy them now! Ha 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 ha! Oh yeah, sorry. <clears throat> the absolute evil used its all-powerful magic to eliminate the archers and open the gates of the city. Oh, Archer. Okay. Using its legend, wait for it, Derry powers. The absolute evil destroyed the impediment with ease and simultaneously eliminated a whole group of defenders. Destroyed. The road to the capital was now clear. The absolute evil did not hesitate for even one nanosecond. The insidious evil entered King's Island. A small, pitiful group of defenders stood. Suddenly, the doors of several houses in the city opened, and with a loud roar, defenders bore down on the rather surprised evil. An ambush. Destroying the keep. The invincible evil had crushed the defenders. King's ending had been defeated. At least, that's what it thought. Was. 
Suddenly, the final heroes of the Alliance emerged from nowhere. Another ambush? Now, this was becoming very boring. But wait, this time it was different. Instead, the heroes raised their hands and started singing an incomprehensible chant. A magical ritual? This did not bode well. Well, actually, it bodes the arrival of good things, great things, unless you happen to be the absolute Somewhere in the depths of the dungeon, the ultimate evil awoke. It did not know what had happened, nor why it had awoken. The last remaining <coughs> heroes of the country joined forces and cast a powerful banishment spell. The absolute evil disappeared from sight with a threatening gesture, and a faint whispered, I'll be there, could be heard coming from its lips. The absolute evil had been banished, and its essence shattered into several pieces. Its reign of terror had ended. The good people of the overworld rejoiced, and an era of peace began for the Alliance. The evil creatures were driven back into the underground, doomed to serve as cannon fodder for pleasure-seeking adventurers. Meanwhile, secreted away in the world's most inaccessible places, the last remains of the absolute evil were resting, never again to see the light of the overworld. Until today, that is. Somewhere deep under the earth, the ultimate evil awoke. And the hand of terror arose, controlled by the ultimate evil. Mm. Come on, hand of terror, arise, damn you! Methinks that exploring the surrounding area would be a sensible strategy. However, to do this, light would be required. Hmm, still not bright enough. An old throne room was revealed by the light. The circumstances remained a mystery. The hand of terror flew through the throne room, following each and every thought the ultimate evil had. After a few flying sessions, the... Ultimate evil was able to control the hand with ease. Time had come to call forth creatures who were completely devoted to it and would do its dirty work. Little snots were the dregs of each and every dungeon and spent their time taking Great the horde! The expansion mad evil hired one snot on the spot. So yeah, so how do, do we hire? First of all, click on the throne room. Yeah? After very careful consideration, the ultimate evil now decided to recruit a little snot. What? Oh. Oh, they were have high little snot. Why isn't it up here? The first little snot appeared. It was completely ready to work in the dungeon and to crawl in the dust before the ultimate evil. Little snots were important to the ultimate evil because they took care of many important little things, such as excavating new areas. The psionically gifted evil could sense the presence of something important that was buried to the south. It instructed its little snots to dig in that direction. As quick as a thought, the little snot made his way to the marked position and began to dig. <laughs> of the overjoyed evil had apparently been much more industrious than it had thought. A great dungeon was revealed behind the wall. Everything was already in place. Doors, traps, a well-filled treasury. Oh, wait. 
treasury? And where, if you please, is this treasury? Oh, oh well. One can't expect too much of these mindless little snots. First of all, some gold had to be dug out to make space for a treasury to be created. The Hand of Terror swiftly marked a few small gold veins so that the little snots could excavate them. As soon as the gold vein was selected, a little snot immediately set out to mine valuable gold for the greedy evil. Once most of the gold had been mined, the Hand of Terror quickly created a treasury on the spot so that the precious metal could be safely stored. The clever evil mastered this task with flying colors. From now on, little snobs could use the treasury to store mined gold. It was then at the greedy evil's disposal whenever more rooms needed to be built or new creatures recruited. Little snots were all well and good, but were too weak and cowardly to defend the dungeon. Since it was not able to defend itself, the ultimate evil would have to hire some orcs. But they would require food. Liquid food. Well, beer to be precise. So the next important thing to build was a brewery. And that would require some space to be created. The ultimate evil had the feeling that its servants were not really putting their backs into the work. Might a hearty slap from the hand of terror change that? Oh. The sadistic evil encouraged its creature to work a little faster, with a friendly but not at all gentle slap. <laughs> this again I cannot build this brewery thing. I don't want to. Oh, 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 I thought I had already told them to dig out the area. Oh, wow. Wow. I thought that yellow thing was flying. Okay, good. We're waiting for them to destroy it. And like, wait, that's what... <laughs> it's kind of funny. Very funny. snaps from the hand of terror the room stood ready excellent but the recently built brewery lacked a brewing copper with a sigh of resignation the overworked evil set about taking care of that too
We need more little snouts. More snouts. More. More. <laughs> yeah, about that. Put a brew kettle in the brewery. Uh huh. How the fuck do you do that? Okay, that's how you do it. The hard working evil effortlessly built a brewing copper so that delicious beer could be brewed as soon as possible. One of the little snobs started working on the brewing copper. The nostalgic evil banished all thoughts of Oktoberfest and brass bands. Those would have to wait. More important tasks had to be completed first. Both beer and gold were now available in the dungeon. So it was time to hire some creatures to defend against greedy heroes or whatever else snuck around underground. At present, it was only simple orcs declaring undying loyalty to the ultimate evil. The rest of the horde was scattered to the winds. Orcs were defensive close combat specialists, capable of dealing with many opponents. However, they were very vulnerable to ranged attacks. The dungeon of the expansion mad evil grew and prospered, but unfortunately, it had reached the maximum possible population it could currently manage. Now a creature would have to be thrown into the bottomless pit before any others could be brought in. The nameless evil creatures came upon a spider's nest during their search for an entrance to the overworld. It would take more than one orc to smoke that out. The abysmal evil used the hand of terror to grab several of the creatures that were still completely inexperienced at fighting and threw them onto the spider's nest. The creature disappeared into the pit of uselessness with a long, drawn, and gradually diminishing life. This particular act of wickedness brought a smile to the face of the ultimate evil. It's payday. An eerie gong rang through the hall. It did not bode well for the ultimate evil's treasury stocks, for at each sounding of the gong, the creatures would collect their undeserved wages. However, there was little it could do about this, as it was chained to the throne. Thus, it had to give free reign to its servants' desires. For the time being, Oh, population points, too. The spiders dropped like flies. The strategically well-versed evil patted itself on the back, proud that it had led its troops into battle with such a bomb. And by led, I just simply mean chucking them at the end. The basics of a dungeon were now in place. However, the brewery was puny and didn't really have room to store beer barrels in. A thirsty orc arrived at the brewery. Eager and snabbering, he started demolishing the alcohol hoarding evil's stock of beer. And your brewery? All right. awoken but its brothers are still asleep huh what on earth was that that's not in my script Weirdo. no matter we better get back to concentrating on the dungeon
One louse infested orc Finally. crawled up from the depths and declared allegiance to the ultimate evil. The first step towards the creation of a powerful army had been taken. The profound evil had had enough of dungeon sightseeing and now wanted to move to the surface to try a dish that is best served cold. Revenge. Some Alliance members were bound to be guarding the entrance to the overworld. A fine appetizer for a vengeful evil. A huge monstrosity loomed out of the darkness on six, no, eight legs. This dungeon's human guards had been ancient history for a long while. Now it was home to a huge spider and her body. Would Sam and Frodo escape it and continue their journey to Mount Doom? Or was this the end of the ring bearer? Hang on a minute, that's not the right text. Where were we? Oh yes, a huge spider, henceforth called the Spider Queen. It would be necessary to eliminate the Spider Queen before the Horde could reach the surface. The Spider Queen sent forth a wave of her children. Of course, the ultimate evil was fully aware of this danger and immediately prepared to defend itself against them. The vile perversion, once called the Spider Queen, had nothing more with which she could fight the Horde. Later, the sensitive evil would have her innards made into a lava lamp. The way to the surface was open. Now it was time to put those vengeance plans into practice. The vile evil wanted to take this opportunity to utter a really sinister laugh. But unfortunately, its physical state made this unviable. Instead, it asked the narrator to do a bit of sinister laughter on its behalf. Oh well, here goes. Deep breath. <laughs> Once the ultimate evil had escaped from the depths, still fettered to the throne, it traveled to wreak terrible vengeance on those who had done this, heavily supported by its little snots. Right. According to scouts, King Robert spent most of his time strolling around his hunting lodge garden reciting poetry. Soon his poetry would turn into mournful ballads. The vengeful evil thirsted to defeat the Alliance's king and mount his head on the wall as a trophy. Whoops, of course, I really mean that he wanted to take all of King Robert's cookies away. Better play it safe or the age classification folks will be after me. Before that, however, the ultimate evil had to do a bit of work on the dungeon. Otherwise, it wouldn't be able to fund even a small army made up of a few orcs. Hire three orcs? Yeah, but we need some cash first. The first treasury was completed. Soon greedy evil's little snots would fill it with gold. Whoever has the gold makes the rules. Right now, the restricted evil was only able to call upon orcs and little snots. But there had been rumors that some goblins were hiding out in a cave somewhere close. The warmongering evil had hired the first orc. As ancient wisdom says, violence is a solution, usually the only one. The first brewery was completed. Soon beer would be flowing like a river, 
and an Oktoberfest atmosphere would pervade all. Would the ultimate evil put the beer baron out of business? Ugh, such a duck reference. Strategy guidebook. Another orc entered the service of the military savvy evil. The horde was growing and prospering. The steady pounding in the rocks had given rise to overworld rumors of a new dungeon. A group of heroes set out to plunder its riches, and the ultimate evil was already looking forward to this visit. <laughs> Enemies have entered the dungeon. The heroes didn't know what had hit them, as several orcs poured down from nowhere and annihilated them. Nice. This group of heroes had plundered their last dungeon, but there would be more. Time to attack appeared to be right. On the surface, in the tavern of a small, miserable village, some adventurers gathered. They were acquiring Dutch courage for their visit to the dungeon by downing several beers. The dungeon had to be destroyed. Dutch courage? All right, let's show them. Ultimate evil slowly made itself cozy underground. Although this was a sensible decision, there was a large and lovely overworld out there, just waiting to be destroyed. It's payday. Enemies in your dungeon. <laughs> Defend the throne room. That's what's happening. Oh, 
Oh shit! Wrong, 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 wrong. The knowledge. Provery. We want Provery here. There we go. Bunny, how could you? I mean, <clears throat> the vile evil, in a display of ruthlessness, vented its anger on this sweet little bundle of fur. Tragic. Yeah, in that guardian that I want to do someday, I was thinking of having a cute bunny race as one of the first races that you should uh, destroy as a evil uh, demon overlord. This is certainly taking its time. A delicious rumble announced the fact that the village's last house had crashed to the ground. There would be no more heroes meeting there to seek out the dungeon of the destruction-hungry evil. Right. The hunting lodge of King Robert lay in the north. It was there that the ultimate evil would finally get its long-awaited revenge. However, it looked pretty damn well guarded. Maybe it should first visit the cave to the west, inhabited by a clan of goblins, where the cunning evil could do a little negotiating. Hello, goblins! You are mine now! The goblin leader prostrated himself joyfully before the ultimate evil and immediately dispatched two goblins into its dungeon with a few plans for a new room, a tinkerer's cave. This was built as quickly as possible. It's payday. The Tinkerer's Cave was built. It could, however, only be used as a warehouse, as it lacked the workshop that the insidious evil's goblins needed. Quick as a flash, evil placed a creator mask in the Tinkerer's Cave. Oh no, no cash.
go. There are enemies in your dungeon. The Tinkerer's Cave was still lying there completely useless. The forgetful evil should place a creator mat in there soon so that this room can be productive. <laughs> That's when, we're, when we have cash for them. Defend the throne room. A sparkling new creator mat graced the Tinkerer's Cave of the Expansion Hungry Evil. A goblin would be able to work well in here, producing toolboxes. A few of these boxes would now be needed in order to invent a trap. The moody evil waited. Love. A drinking beer. I guess they can't do that. Day. <laughs> you search a trap, come on, just do it already.
friendly as the goblins were, their creativity more than made up for this. They proudly presented the treacherous evil with their plan for a devious trap. With a silent evil cackle, it quickly buckled down to setting the trap. Place the trap. Did you know that Realm Forge Studios has brought out some other successful games? You should at least buy and play Dungeons and Seville. Talk about pathetic, surreptitious advertising. Enough to make you vomit. Build it, build it, build it. Come on, come on, faster. Job done. The trap was finished and ready to be found by a hero. <laughs> this is going to be so much fun. Just at that moment, a particularly powerful dwarf warrior appeared in the dungeon. How had he suddenly arrived at this precise time was indeed most odd, but his presence was more than welcome. He was going to be a guinea pig for the trap. Even this strong dwarf warrior didn't stand a chance against the treacherous traps and powerful monsters of the invincible evil. He bit the dust. So much for a game of dwarves. <laughs> The dungeon's defenses were now clearly much improved, but the hunting lodge still remained well protected and impregnable. There was nothing that the ultimate evil could do. Oh. The task oh. was impossible. Um. So the evil withdrew, bent and broken. Let feelings of revenge ebb away, and instead took up looking after those cute, teeny weeny trees. What are they called again? Bonsai, yes, that's it. The end. Pretty unsatisfactory, huh? Of course, that wasn't the end. In reality, the indefatigable evil paid the goblin cave another little visit. The goblin leader would hopefully spit out something useful after a few more slaps. Research a hospital. The expansion-driven evil couldn't wait to explore the further possibilities of the Tinkerer's Cave. In particular, a hospital seemed a useful way to cure its ailing units. It set about asking for this to be researched. Let's go over there and punish the Goblin Chieftain. Beat him up! <laughs> Bum 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 Beat him up Alright, let's see what we can do here CHARGE! A few hard slaps were enough to motivate the leader of the goblins to help the ultimate evil As it transpired, there was an old tunnel which had been previously used as an escape route this connected the goblin cave with the vaults of the hunting lodge. The goblin leader voluntarily made a goblin assassin available to the hard-hitting evil to help infiltrate the lodge. The charitable evil had researched the hospital. This would enable its units to quickly recover from their injuries, once it had been built, that is. Good traps.
Uh-oh. Enemies have entered the dungeon. Enemies have entered the dungeon. Mm. The cheerful evil was pleased with this support. An assassin was a decent melee fighter, but its actual strength lay in its ability to make itself invisible. This was, of course, tested. The caring evil had good-naturedly built a hospital for its suffering creatures. We call it, that however, a hospital? still lacked a hospital bed. Little Snots would then bring any units there that had been injured in the dungeon. The first hospital bed had been built. Wounded units could now be healed in the hospital. Little Snots would also be able to bring defeated creatures here so that they could be nursed back to health. Oh, dang, that's a lot of cash. Deactivate traps till it's on off. Despite the powerful invisibility skill, it was advisable for the ultimate evil to be cautious. Some opponents had such highly trained observation skills that they were actually able to see invisible units. A locked door prevented the assassin from progressing. It would have taken a long, long, long time for him to have opened it with sheer brute force using weaponry. Thankfully, he had a suitable skill with which he could deactivate doors, and more importantly, traps. Nice. The on-the-ball evil recognized that the warrior princess there was extremely powerful. The goblin assassin would be best advised to avoid any contact with her. <laughs> A gobobot was being forced to make miserable repairs in the lodge. A brief feeling of what it thought might be sympathy passed through the sensitive evil, but this actually turned out to be a mighty belch. Naturally, it would free the useful Gobbo bot anyway. by the assassin's attempt at rescuing it, the Gobobot joined the horde and succeeded in showing its tormentors a real hot time. Its ability to more or less ignore range damage and set fire to large areas would come in very handy. Oh Enemies have entered the dungeon.
GG. The hunting lodge was completely destroyed. The vengeful evil gave itself a very self-satisfied pat on the back. The time was right to concentrate on King Robert. He was in his renowned garden reciting his much less renowned love poems. The lyrically challenged evil had no time for poetry and would soon make this tangibly clear to him. The king was accompanied by a pixie who was able to cast powerful healing magic. Any direct attack would be suicidal. Mercifully, the omniscient and helpful narrator was at hand. He pointed out to the impatient evil that the pixie went off from time to time in order to check that all was well, and much more importantly, eat her supper in a little camp to the sun. The pixie buzzed over to eat her meal. The ultimate evil prepared an ambush. spoken her last healing spell. The crafty-minded evil sculpted a fan from her wings. Now it was time to look for King Robert and ensure his early demise. Fell, and the ultimate evil had received its well-deserved revenge. But there were still many more heroes out there who deserved to bite the dust. Their time would come. Nice. The demigod Krotos, one of the sniveling cowards who had banished the ultimate evil, had just marched his alliance army out of the swamplands to fight the snake-like Nagas. The ultimate evil wanted to teach him the full futility of war by ensuring his untimely passing. Besides, the Nagas could prove to be valuable allies. I think we're gonna do it, do it like this for now. Uh, I originally only started this so that we could do a short postal to finish. Um, I'm gonna take a break now for maybe one, two hours or so, and after that we will continue more uh, with this game. So, take care, I'll see you guys around. I'm a bit tired, still tired, so I think I'm gonna take a nap or something like that. And then we continue, probably. So yeah, uh, see you guys later. Happy time. <laughs>